Black Ops 6 is finally here and we've got a lot going on with this launch and for many players it's been hard to decide what to load up first. Well I just got back from New Zealand and got some early access with the game and had a chance to thoroughly play each game mode and have finalized thoughts on each as well. Without further ado, this is the only Black Ops 6 review you need. Maybe you'll find this helpful if you're on the fence about buying Black Ops 6 or if you already have the game and want to hear a seasoned COD vet with over 15 years of service to the game, stay tuned. I'll be breaking this down into each game mode but go ahead and let me know your initial thoughts on Black Ops 6. I think every Call of Duty success is almost always dependent on how the multiplayer is received, and Black Ops 6 is a very fresh but familiar experience for new and returning players to the franchise. Obviously you have to start things off with movement, and if you played the beta, which most of you probably have, you would know that this movement is very clean, fluid, and easy to use. It does take some getting used to, but once you tweak your settings a little bit and find what works for you, it's fairly fast to pick up. This is also coming from a controller player's perspective, I do play mouse and keyboard in other games as well, and I gave Omni movement a shot and on mouse and keyboard and it was just like the worst thing ever. Not to start a debate here, but I think on movement for mouse and keyboard players is going to take way more time for adjusting than a controller player. Moving forward to the gunplay, this is another great thing this game has going for it. Strong guns have recoil and weaker guns don't have as much, which make these like high damage guns way more satisfying with each kill since you have to really dial in to hit your shots. This gunplay complements the movement very well and makes for a seamless experience. The movement combined with the gunplay have really increased the skill gap and I think this really lets like the better player win most gunfights even if they're like at lower HP. While we're talking about gunplay, we can also mention how varied the arsenal is in my opinion. I know a lot of people have really been digging like the AIMS and the XM4 assault rifles, but for me personally, my favorite AR has been the AK-74, while a lot of other people don't really care for that it seems. What I'm trying to say here is there are a lot of options and I personally have only found a handful of guns that I actually don't really care for whatsoever. On top of that, the balance in this game is pretty decent I would say for a launch Call of Duty. Normally at launch there's like a ton of broken guns and there are a handful in this game still, like the AEK marksman rifles like a one burst right now and then the Dragonov sniper has this bug where like as soon as you start to ADS it's accurate 100% to your crosshair which means you don't have to aim down all the way to like pretty much quick scope it's pretty wild I'll show you some footage on screen right now and I'm sure in the coming days people are going to start finding like guns attachments or perks with exploits that are unbalanced and so I don't want to go ahead and commit to saying this game is like 100% balanced but for a launch title I will give it some credit for that the creative class system has been simplified from the last two years of unnecessary complications and options to a way more traditional format that I personally love we have a new like tier or class system of perks that have multiple in each slot And if you choose the same perk class in each slot you get a mega perk that gives you another added effect That sort of complements the other perk classes effects in a way For example the enforcer perk class focuses on perks that give you like a rush or like run and gun setup So that mega perk or combat specialty bonus is after getting kills you get a faster health regeneration and a movement buff Which pairs with those perks perfectly Although I am slightly disappointed we don't have the pick 10 back in action That slight rework to perks is a great concept that I I think is really good. Even though we don't have pick 10, we do have wild cards back, which I think everyone is going to be on board with. Wild cards basically let you break the rules when it comes to create a class and help you get like whatever kind of play style you're honing in for. Things like overkill, which y'all know lets you have two primary weapons. Perk greed, give you an extra perk slot. Gunfighter, which lets you have an eight attachment gun. Or we also have extra tactical and lethal, which I don't really think needs any explaining. As far as kitting out a weapon goes, we still have the gunsmith, but we've seen a lot of trimming of the fat here, which was desperately needed. Each attachment slot has like maybe five options now aside from the optics which is fine but now we have a much simpler option where it basically just says this grip does horizontal recoil but maybe nerfs your ads and like no like extra numbers or like way more like excessive details necessary just short and sweet and to the point and now we have custom reticles back which is also fire because like that was always a fun thing that we've had in call of duty forever ago but haven't had since i think like black ops cold war if i'm not mistaken progression has also been simplified all you need to do is get to level x to unlock x item no armory unlocks or stupid like prerequisites beforehand. Leveling up your rank is also gratifying because you unlock vital perks and wild cards and kill streaks way further in the game that you wish you had sooner. And we all know that the prestige system is back yet again with another great change to the progression. With that comes just like way more replayability and a ton of exclusive titles and items to grind for now. However, I do want to say that the weapon leveling takes way longer than I would personally like. Like every gun has like 40 or 50 levels, which is just way, way, way too much in my opinion. Well, maybe it's not too much for how long it takes to level up a gun. It's probably not in 
uncommon to get a weapon gold well before you get that gun to max level, which I don't think should be a thing. Speaking of camos, the camo grind also had a ton of rework, and I'm not really sure how I feel about it right now. The one inherently good change of the camo grind is now you can start your camo progression at any given moment with no level requirement beforehand. However, for each gun, you need 100 headshots before you can unlock the challenge for gold. Now, for ARs and SMGs, and even marksman rifles, this really isn't a problem because that's something you're going to be, like, doing anyways just by playing the game. But this also goes for snipers and, more importantly, shotguns as well. To me, this is something that, like, has to be changed because shotgun headshots are, are just, like, so, like, RNG-based because of, like, how big the bullet spread is. Other than that, those first 100 headshots for, like, the ARs and SMGs is, like, no problem to me. I just think they need to rework the snipers and shotguns. Just, like, a minor nitpick of mine. We can go ahead and talk about the camel grind for zombies, which, in order to unlock the gold challenge for any gun, you need 2,000 headshots or, like, critical kills before you unlock it. Obviously, in zombies, there's a ton of opportunities for way more kills, but this is something that is just going to take forever for every single gun. But, I mean, I guess they don't call it a camo grind for no reason. Before we move on to zombies, I want to talk about one last thing that I, like, am really disappointed with multiplayer, and those are the maps. I've played every map several times, and all I have to say is, at this point in time, there is not a single map that I get excited to play in this game. I mean, Scud was obviously terribly received in the beta, and that still hasn't changed. But to me, there are still only, like, four decent maps in the game, and when I mean decent, I mean, like, slightly above mid. Maybe they're starting to warm up to me. I mean, like, I know I hated the map Vorkuta at first, but now it's starting to, like... I don't know, it's probably one of the more better maps in the game to me. But then you have maps like Low Town, which has a ton of water. I mean, this map is like actually horrible. But as I'll talk about later in this video, if we can get some like amazing post-launch content like service that we did with Modern Warfare 3, this problem could be like a thing of the past. <laughs> Alright, if I'm most disappointed by one thing in this game, it is without a doubt the zombies. Now, let's get one thing out of the way. This is light years ahead of Modern Warfare Zombies, and it is, like, not even close. Black Ops 6 Zombies is good, but if you're looking to capture those childhood memories of round 30 on Dereze as a child, you may be disappointed. It was clear at Connex that Zombies was pretty much taking the Cold War formula, giving it some more life. Which, once again, I don't think Cold War Zombies is bad per se, just not something the community was really looking or asking for, for that matter. Do you remember loading into a new Zombies map for the first time? Kind of exploring and poking around, finding new things you could interact with but knew you somehow could if you did something else, or see a room you knew you could get into but just didn't know how. Maybe later on you started figuring it out but ended up dying, which only made you want to immediately run it back. Maybe watch a Raffle Waffles video for help, only this time to make it further in the progression of said map to discover something else that you needed help with. That's the zombies experience I know and love, so when I load into zombies and have a whole ass mini map with quite literally anything you could possibly interact with marked for me, that I can then ping to showcase on my screen the exact exact location. Sorry if I'm a little disappointed that the mystery and charm behind zombies felt like it had been stripped away from me in Black Ops 6 Zombies, because this is the case. Specifically, the Liberty Balls map layout is one of the most simple and spoon-fed baby zombies experiences out there. There's not even a power switch. I mean, like, come on, everything's just, like, ready to go right as you load in. From the spawn, you can take a peep of your map, see all the perks, wall buys, mystery box, and pack a punch with no need for poking around or really any trial and error whatsoever. But it doesn't stop there. Loadouts are back in zombies and just, like, why? I guess this is kind of necessary for the camel grind, but still cringe in my opinion. There's armor plates, broken field upgrades you spawn in with, a constant radar sweep showing you where any and all zombies are. Every single gun is decent, but still probably even broken. And one of my least favorite additions of Cold War Zombies makes a return, and those are the kill streaks. You tell me why I can be surrounded by zombies, then just call in my chopper gunner and teleport to the sky and start laying waste to all the zombies without them even touching me. I think this is something I hate about Cold War, and I hate it even more in Black Ops 6. I'm fine with things like RCXDs, that there's nice little like fun things to use, but overall I'm not in on this. What I really want to prove here is the zombies has progressively gotten easier as time went on, and this iteration just holds your hand like the whole way through. Terminus I think is the better of the two maps, and all the elements I spoke of still exist on this map. However, there's one big difference, and that is that you actually need to turn the power on, and that feature alone makes this like way more rewarding than Liberty Falls. I really feel just like a little bit more like zombies. Now, I know I've been complaining a lot, and I hate to be negative, but I actually don't think that Black Ops 6 zombies is like inherently bad whatsoever. There is actually a lot of fun to be had and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Now turning into much more arcadey like gameplay, you can go for some pretty insane high rounds because everything is just like broken. I remember throwing a Molotov at round like 20 and this thing did way more damage than I would have ever expected. And there's also a pretty big switch up in the difficulty that comes at round like 12 where if you don't have a pack-a-punched weapon, it's going to take way longer to kill zombies. We have some other changes to the format and that's augments which I think are really cool but maybe add like too much customization to zombies. 
abilities. Basically, it just gives your perks and ammo kits like this added like bonus effect that you can choose from, and you have to like also like level them up to unlock them in the first place. And we also can't ignore the return of gobble gums, which to me is about the most customization I can stand in zombies for the longest time. But augments are another great addition for customization that like I think will be pretty good for the franchise. I don't know. Maybe some people think it's too much, but I would love to know people's opinion on that because I don't really know where I stand as well. But the best way to sum up Black Ops 6 Zombies is with three statements. One, if you've never played zombies before, this is probably going to be a lot of fun for you. Two, if you liked Cold War Zombies, you'll love Black Ops 6 Zombies for sure. And three, if you're a purist Zombies fan, you might be disappointed. Probably are going to be disappointed, actually. Now, none of these statements mean this is like a bad or good Zombies experience. I actually had a lot of fun playing my solo runs, and as of me writing this, the Easter egg quest just went live, and I definitely plan on completing those. If you want to discredit me for not finishing those before writing a review, that's totally fine, by the way. Zombies has been neglected for a lot, like almost like an entire decade now, and I do want to give credit to Black Ops 6 Zombies because this is probably one of the best installments post Black Ops 3, in my opinion. But once again, that's not really saying much. I understand that these games have to meet like the modern audience, and if that means sugarcoating and spoon feeding every little thing about the game, I guess that's what it's come to. I'm pretty confident that if this is your first Zombies experience, you're probably gonna have a really good time with this. I think Call of Duty's live service model could also make Black Ops 6 Zombies one of the best in the franchise, because we have so many old maps in the vault that we could just release for each season or like season reloaded. And that is just such an easy way to start moving in the right direction, because we kind of already have like an area code right now, but we could really just like take things up a notch with live service. To me, it's a no-brainer because there is just like an absolute treasure trove of content they could pour into Black Ops 6 Zombies. And it's something that like new players I think would really like, but especially old players would just go absolutely bananas over. But I'm definitely not getting my hopes up. Campaign, similar to Zombies, is another aspect of Call of Duty that has been totally neglected. People forget that the older Call of Duties had some of the best campaigns of any single player games at the time, and that's going beyond Call of Duty. Now to avoid spoilers, I'm only going to show gunplay or really even talk about the first like mission or two, but Black Ops 6 not only has a fun story that kind of like takes this independent mercenary approach, but is followed up by some of the most beautiful and immersive cutscenes to not only the franchise, but modern gaming as well. I mean, these are some of the best graphics I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this is like definition of state of the art. And I'm not even one to care about graphics, but I will always give credit where credit is due. The story is great with some new like open world elements that I don't really want to dive into for spoilers sake. There's a ton of fun missions that you won't be forgetting anytime soon. A lot of just like fun settings and fun ideas and kind of like really intense moments. I mean, this is just like one of the better campaigns in the franchise without a doubt. This definitely cracks the top 10 of all Call of Duty campaigns, which I guess doesn't say much because there's only like 20 to begin with, but it could maybe creep into the top five. There's just like a lot of stiff competition. Overall, Black Ops 6 has taken a huge step in the right direction as easily the best Call of Duty since Modern Warfare 19, but realistically, maybe since like Black Ops 3. And that's just my opinion, so don't hate on me, and I could be riding like this new media high, so we'll see if this ages well. Blackluster zombies and multiplayer maps are the two biggest downfalls for the game for me, but we still have post-launch content that I think could end up making this one of the best Call of Duties in recent memory. I know that's a big statement, but Modern Warfare 3 had some of the best post-launch content, and if Black Ops 6 multiplayer and zombies get the same treatment, we could have an amazing year of Call of Duty on our hands. With that in mind, the current launch date of Black Ops 6 has hit hard in a good way, and if I have to give it a score, I'm thinking a modest score of 8.4 out of 10 is appropriate for the game. But what do you think? Is Black Ops 6 a good game? What modes have you been playing, and which one's your favorite? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy, and if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike, and thank you so much for watching.